Welcome to another video in the Visual Cobalt for Eclipse in a Nutshell series. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use Eclipse in a development environment to build and debug Cobalt applications which will run inside Docker containers. We'll explore prerequisites and background for this demo, a simple Cobalt application. We'll first debug it locally on the developer's machine. Then we'll cover the additional setup related to using Visual COBOL with Docker. Finally, we'll debug the same application running inside a Docker container. The information in this video assumes that you are familiar with COBOL programming and that you have the required products installed and licensed, namely Visual COBOL for Eclipse. You can find information about installing and licensing Visual COBOL for Eclipse as well as how to use many features of the product in the YouTube playlist Visual COBOL for Eclipse in a Nutshell. The demo also requires the product Visual COBOL Build Tools for Docker for Windows to be installed and licensed on the developer's workstation. Details on installing this product are covered in the YouTube video Installing Visual COBOL Support for Docker also available in the above playlist. This video focuses on the tasks to develop and debug containerized COBOL applications locally on the developer's workstation. A subsequent video in this series will cover the steps to build your COBOL application into a Docker image for deployment, as well as how to debug against an application deployed beyond the developer's workstation. Finally, the demonstration in this video uses Visual COBOL 6.0. Many of the features shown are new in that version, so you won't find them in earlier products. As a review from the video on installing Visual COBOL build tools, let's quickly look at an example installation profile for using Visual COBOL for Eclipse in conjunction with Docker containers. First, the Visual COBOL for Eclipse product must be installed on the developer's workstation. Second, the appropriate Docker product should be installed on the workstation. This example is on Windows 10, where the features shown require Docker Desktop, sometimes called Docker Community Edition for Windows. Please see the Visual COBOL documentation for information about the required Docker Edition for other OS versions and platforms. Finally, debugging COBOL applications inside a container requires that a Docker-specific Visual COBOL product is installed into the Docker environment. This product is Visual COBOL Build Tools for Docker. For those already familiar with the remote development feature in Visual COBOL for Eclipse, Build Tools for Docker is somewhat similar to the Visual COBOL Development Hub product that's required for developing applications remotely on Unix Linux platforms. In this case, Visual COBOL Build Tools for Docker is installed as a Docker image and will run remotely inside a Docker container. With this setup, COBOL programs can be developed in the IDE and initially debugged locally on the developer's workstation. The same application executables can then be deployed into a Docker container, or these can be rebuilt inside the container. Using the Eclipse IDE, the developer can also debug the application running remotely inside the container. Finally, the corresponding product with Docker support to install in environments beyond development is COBOL Server for Docker. Before starting the demo, here's a little background with some details about what's covered. The demonstration here is of working with a native COBOL application with Docker. Visual COBOL also supports working with JVM COBOL with containers, but the process and setup are different than shown here. Please see the product documentation for details of working with JVM COBOL with containers. Now for a quick overview of the demo. First, we'll debug a simple native COBOL application running locally on the developer's workstation. 
Then we'll walk through the extra steps related to debugging the same application running inside a container. Finally, we'll debug the application running inside a Docker container. Now that we have our roadmap, on with the demo. In my Eclipse workspace, I have a native COBOL project named Hello 64-bit Docker Proj. In the project, I have a simple COBOL program named dockerdemo.cbl. Let's briefly review the program. I'll use the outline view in Eclipse to quickly jump down to the procedure division. This program creates a simple report showing information about the COBOL product version in use and whether the program is running on a full OS or inside a container. Let's quickly try the program in the debugger, running locally on my desktop. I'll right-click on the program in the COBOL Explorer view, choose Debug as COBOL application, and accept the option to switch to the debug perspective. The program first opens an output file for the report, and then calls a built-in routine named COBOL GET OS INFO to gather information about the COBOL product in use and the environment in which it's running. The program then writes the report with this information. I'll click the Resume button to allow the program to run to completion. Now that the execution is completed, I'll switch back to the COBOL perspective and look at the report file that was produced. The report file was created within the new configuration.bin directory inside the project. After the test, I may have to refresh the directory to see the added file. Reviewing the report, I see that I'm running Visual COBOL version 6 and that no patch updates are installed on this system, and that the program was running on a full OS rather than inside a container. I'm going to rename this file to indicate that this report was generated by running locally on my desktop. Next, let's work our way through those additional steps required to work with containers in the Eclipse IDE. First, we'll review the project properties that relate to working with containers. To access these, I'll go to Project Properties and then Microfocus, Project Settings, Container. I won't change these settings, but I'll point out that I can customize the name of the Docker file that will be created in the next step, as well as some of the settings it contains. I could also customize arguments that will be passed to Docker when our container is built and when it's started. Next, we'll build a Docker file, which is sort of a recipe that Docker will use to create the Docker image for our application. When we run our application, this image will be launched as a Docker container that our program will run within. Visual COBOL for Eclipse can build a Docker file for you. Let's switch back to the IDE to see how this is done. To do this, I'll right-click on the project and select New Docker File. In this demo, my application will not be running within the Microfocus COBOL application server named Enterprise Server. So, I'll stay with the default option that does not add instructions to the Docker file that relate to configuring an Enterprise Server or region. I'll click Finish and my Docker file is created. The wizard opens the Docker file. You can further customize the contents and environment that the application will see within the container by making changes to this file. A full discussion of a Docker file is beyond the scope of this video, but in general, these settings allow you to control such items as the creation of the Docker container, the commands that will be used to place your application into the container, 
and the command executed inside the container to launch your application. Now, let's look at the debug run options that will control, when our application is launched from the IDE, whether it will run inside a container, and if so, how the application will be placed into the container. There are three options offered. Let's review each one to understand what they provide. The first, which we've already used, is the default setting. Run on machine where project is located. This indicates that containers are not to be used. The application will be executed and debugged directly on the developer's workstation. The second option, Use Base Stage from Docker File, indicates that I'd like to debug the same application that I've built locally on my workstation, but while running within a container. When the debugger is launched, it will create a temporary Docker container on the fly. It will then launch the application inside the container and debug it from the Eclipse IDE. After the application completes, the Docker container will be removed. The third option, Use Project Docker File, also creates a temporary container. However, in this case, the application will actually be rebuilt inside the container and then launched and debugged. This option may take a little longer because of the rebuild of the application. However, since it uses the environment that's in effect inside the container during the build, the build is isolated from changes the developer might make over time to the environment on their workstation or from differences between environments on different developer machines. With that background, Let's go ahead and modify the debug configuration for this program. I'll access this from the Eclipse menu, choosing Run and the Debug Configurations. I see the debug configuration that was created when I originally ran the program. It was named for my project. Let's go to the Containers pane. For this demo, I'll choose the second option, indicating that I'd like to have my built application debugged within a container. Notice that this option allows me to specify or override parameters that will be used when the created Docker container is launched. The default container run parameter shown with this option creates a mapping between the new configuration.bin directory within my Eclipse project on my workstation and the application launch directory that will be used in the container. In effect, this simulates a deploy into the container. So when using this container debugging option, the executable invoked from the container actually resides back on my workstation inside my project. And any files that are produced within the present working directory by the program running inside the container such as the report generated by my COBOL program, will actually be created back in the same directory on my workstation. This means my output file will still be available for review after the execution has completed and the container is no longer running. Once again, since these options first build a Docker container, it can take a few minutes before the application starts and the debugger connects. I'll go ahead and launch the debugger with this option. In the debugger, I'll use the program outline view and identify the paragraph that determines whether the program is running inside a container. I can place a breakpoint right from the outline view. Then I'll click the Resume button to run at full speed. When the program stops, I'll step through the logic that makes the container determination. It uses some of the data returned by the call to 
COBOL get OS info as we discussed earlier. I see that it knows we're running inside a container. I'll click resume to finish the execution. Now I'll switch back to the COBOL perspective and open the new run report a text file that was produced. In this file, I can see the expected results reported, showing my program was running inside a container. This concludes this video on using Eclipse in a development environment to build and debug COBOL applications which will run inside Docker containers. Please stay tuned for additional videos in this series. Thanks for watching.